Back in the day I was doing uh, full physics simulations of electrochemical systems and to accomplish this we had to solve tens of thousands of coupled differential equations with um, a ton of algebraic constraints on them. Uh, these systems are typically referred to as differential algebraic equations and there were not that many packages available that would handle them. There was a uh, Fortran library called DASL and MATLAB had built-in capabil built capabilities that could do this, but it was slow because it was MATLAB and an interpreted language. So basically what I did is write a C wrapper around the Fortran library so I could pass C code directly to the Fortran, and then to make it usable within MATLAB, I had a separate MEX function that would send uh, information from MATLAB to this uh, Fortran library. A number of years ago, the folks at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories uh, began to rewrite this Fortran library uh, in both C and Fortran uh, to get around both licensing issues and to modernize the software. Now, this had the differential algebraic equ equation capabilities as well as ordinary differential equations and a host of other functionality like um, just being able to solve nonlinear algebraic equations and things like that. This package, which is still actively maintained, is called Sundials, uh, which stands for a suite of nonlinear differential and algebraic equations. As I mentioned in the past, we're slowly transitioning uh, from MATLAB to a Python-based, I, I don't know what you want to call it, a Python-based analysis and simulation stack. Uh, so I was looking for Python-based uh, differential algebraic equation solvers and uh, there really weren't any, uh, but I did find that some people had started to write a wrapper, a Python wrapper around the Sundials library. Uh, the one I've been using is called Assimilo, and I intended to do videos on this at some point in the future, more when I talk about differential algebraic equations. However, their ordinary differential equation solvers, like uh, SciPy's built-in solvers, have root finding capabilities, and unlike SciPy's, these actually produce the, uh, the the dependent variable uh, values when an event is detected. Unfortunately, the interface is uh, kind of considerably different from the ordinary Python or MATLAB uh, style of, of coding these problems up. So I'm just going to do a quick little video here just solving the projectile motion problem with no air friction uh, using, using Sundial's ordinary differential equation solver. This will be a very quick or overview of the ordinary differential equation solver. I'll go into a Similo and Sundials in more detail when I talk about differential algebraic equations, but I just wanted to throw this out there in case anybody needs um, ordinary differential equations with event detection um, that functions a little more efficiently than what I showed in, um, in, in terms of tweaking SciPy to actually produce, produce uh, decent results. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, and we're also going to need to import the explicit problem, uh, which is basically the ODE solver itself, uh, from the problems library. Let's just see if this runs. Seems to. Um, there are a lot of issues sometimes getting this to, getting this a similar set up on various systems. Um, on Linux, it wasn't too bad. I had to compile a lot of Fortran libraries. I had to compile the Sundials library, and was very finicky about which version of Sundials I was using. On this Windows machine here, I'm using Anaconda, um, and it comes basically, it doesn't come bundled with it, but the uh, Conda package installer can install it uh, pretty, pretty easily. And the last um, thing we will need is the terminate simulation from the um, excep exceptions package. So this works a little differently than uh, SciPy. In our events function, when an event is detected, we're going to use this um, essentially an exception and return return it so that the solver knows when to stop. So okay, let's go on now and define our what did I do? Down here. Let's define our no drag function and I cannot spell drag to save my life. Drag. Um, the functional form is the same as SciPy so it's going to return the derivative and it's going to take an argument time and then a vector of the dependent variables and I was wondering why I always um, did this when it's not quite re required in SciPy, but I forgot that it is required in um, a Similo, that you, the return object from this function has to be a vector, whereas in SciPy you can get away with returning a list if you want. So I'm just going to do, um, I don't know, x.shape. So that should do that. 
um, before I forget, return x prime. And the definitions are the same as before. So I'm just going to copy and paste those in. So copy, paste. Okay, that looks good there. Does this run? It seems to. Uh, we'll find out when we actually run the code. So now let's do our events function. That's also going to take a t and an x, and it's also going to take a variable called sw, which I'm uh, for switch. And the reason for this is a symbol can accom accommodate many different types of models um, depending on where you are in the you, where your t's and your x's are, so that you can switch between different types of models. Um, we're not going to use that, but the function still is required to. Uh, to uh, have that argument there. So we're going to define a vector uh, res as np.0s. Actually, I'm going to do np.1s just to make sure that only the component we want is um, goes to 0. So it's np.1. x.shape is going to be the uh, shape of this vector. And it's the third component, or x2. Um, that we want to look at here. So just like before, uh, when the y value is goes to zero, um, this component is going to go to zero. And now we just return that residual. So does this run? So far, so good. So the next function we're going to need to do is called handle event. So this function up here is going to detect. This one is going to actually tell what to do when an event is detected. And it's going to take a solver argument and an event info argument and these are just provided automatically by the solver we don't have to do anything with that so uh, from here we're just going to return this um, where is it here this uh, termination uh, routine so in fact let's just copy that and come down here and go return paste that should handle all of our um, that should take care of all of our helper functions so now let's actually set up the solvers and run the code. So down here in this new cell, I'm going to just copy and paste our initial velocity from before and our initial angle theta from before. And our initial conditions are the same as before, and it's also going to be a vector, so I'm just going to copy and paste that as well. So let's do that. These are our, our initial conditions. Um, we're going to need to create a variable called t0 which is our start time and that's just going to be 0, 0.0 so the the format uh, that this uses is different than than scipy's so now let's create our model object and that's going to be our explicit problem it's going to take the function no drag um, no drag uh, our initial conditions and that t0 so that should take care of that. So now what do we need? Uh, we need to attach our functions, um, event detection functions, to this this uh, model object. So model dot uh, state events is going to equal events, and model dot handle event is going to equal handle event. Does this run? So far, so good. So let's come back up here and we're going to create a simulation object and that's going to be equal to our CV ODE solver and we're going to pass in our model and what else do we need? I believe that's all we need. So now we can come down here and just do a sim that simulate. Um, our start time is already defined so we need to define an end time. We're just going to say five seconds and we're going to ask for it to integrate a hundred points and let's see uh, now we'll see where all the mistakes are oh, it actually seems to run um, cool so let's um, plot out these results and make sure um, that we're getting something decent so why is it printing um, <clears throat> let's do that that should work a little better and uh, let's plot this out and see what we get here. Um, so plt.plot x 0 our x direction and our y direction is the second column. 
So, okay, um, we're not catching our event for some reason, but we are getting a parabola. So we're, we are integrating correctly. We're just not catching the event. So let's try to uh, figure out uh, what's going on there. It actually took me a moment to figure out what was going on here. And the issue is this should not be return. This should be raise. So if we run that, run that, run that. Now we get a nice uh, cutoff at uh, y equals zero. And just to be sure, let's just print t, the last element of t. So that is 4.63585. That's exactly what we got with the uh, both MATLAB and uh, SciPy as far as the event time. So yeah, that's, that's about it. Cool. Uh, I tend to use a Similo for any uh, real-world uh, Python-based differential equations uh, issues that I come up come up against. Um, it's a bit of a pain. I find the documentation a bit lacking, and uh, it's a little less convenient since its format is not the same as like SciPy, which is very MATLAB-like in its interface. But it is much more um, expansive than what SciPy has available um, right now. And I've done some pretty complicated things with it. I've talked about differential algebraic equations a bit, uh, and I've done some pretty complicated things where we've integrated uh, solutions to very complicated systems of equations into web apps using uh, Python frameworks. So it plays very nicely with existing Python type of uh, Python libraries and frameworks and, and whatnot. So I know I said we'd be going back to finance and do a probability of making 50% on uh, option spreads, but I just wanted to get this out there. It's a quick video. I know I didn't go into any uh, great depth on how uh, Assimilo works or sundials, and we'll do that in a future video, uh, especially if we talk about differential algebraic equations, um, which tend to arise in a lot of physics-based simulations or when trying to solve partial differential equations because you transform it into a system of... Uh, ordinary differential equations and then they have algebraic constraint constraints at the boundaries that impose your boundary conditions so they come up uh, quite often in, in real world applications so yeah uh, until then see ya